Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I was admiring this beautiful earth behind me. Hmm, what are we going to be talking about today? Oh yeah, another intriguing story where the press might have actually misinterpreted something that was not discovered at all. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This. It was referred to as the Quantum Yin and Yang. With titles like Quantum Yin and Yang shows two photons being entangled in real time. Scientists visualize quantum entanglement of photons for the first time. The yin and yang of photon entanglement. And I'm pretty certain most of you have already seen this image because it went viral approximately one week ago. Now back then I actually had a really bad throat, which I still do by the way, so I didn't really get to make this video right away, but I was just sitting there, boiling, trying to figure out how do I actually present this because this is literally not at all what was discovered. This does not show us quantum entanglement as a yin and yang. In other words, unlike those titles, this is not an image of quantum entanglement. This is not an image of two photons entangled to each other. And honestly, this is really more on researchers in this case, because they kind of took this image without realizing that it's going to completely mislead the audience, or technically, the readers, the listeners, the watchers of videos. So, in some sense, this was just a pretty cool experiment with a picture that unfortunately misinterprets everything. So, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's talk about how this is not an image of quantum entanglement, and let's discuss what's actually here, why this is still kind of important, and to some extent what exactly is this all for. First, let's start with the technology that was actually used here, and the main principles behind all of this. Oh wait, first let's start with a brief 5 second introduction to quantum entanglement. In certain conditions you can create an environment where particles become entangled to one another. They start interacting in such a way where affecting one particle affects the other. And although we're not going to discuss a lot of detail, this is something that's been proven many times, one of the most interesting applications of this is with the use of photons. By splitting a laser beam, it becomes possible to entangle photons, which actually creates a lot of opportunities for different types of research. And as a matter of fact, a lot of recent discoveries in quantum physics and quantum mechanics, especially the ones involving quantum computers, would usually use these entangled photons. You can actually learn about some of them in the description below. But I guess more intriguingly, several scientists realized that you can actually use this principle to do quite a lot of intriguing things. For example, you can actually use this for encryption, or specifically sending encrypted data. So here, let's just say I'm sending you a lot of super secret data, but I'm doing this by splitting the laser beams and sending you the data along two separate streams, with each of these bits being entangled. And the thing is, if someone tries to intercept this data and tries to listen to it, it actually automatically disentangles these particles just by nature of quantum physics. It represents a kind of an observation of these particles, which means that you know exactly when you were hacked and when your data was intercepted. That's of course just one of many applications. Another application is a little bit more intriguing. You can use the entangled photons to try to scan things or to try to visualize things that would be otherwise invisible to us. For example, super super tiny things, or maybe objects, where there is really practically no light. Technically this is an extension of what's known as digital holography, where we try to recreate various invisible objects by processing holograms using photons of light. And even more broadly, this is also part of tomography, with the famous example here being the MRI scan, where we try to reconstruct a three-dimensional object from a lot of two-dimensional images creating a single object at the end. Although in digital holography, this recreation is usually done by reconstructing what's known as interferogram, an image showing us interaction or interference of light scattered by the object we're scanning. And so here we get a lot of different peaks when there is a lot of constructive interference, and we get a lot of trolls when there is a destructive interference. Here's a really good example of basically our blood cell. This is a blood erythrocyte. And this was created by looking at the interference patterns as the light interacted with this blood cell. Here's another slightly different example, this is from USGS, and this shows us the interference patterns that show us the changes in surface altitude. This is basically a radar image produced from outer space. But in the last few years, scientists have actually tried to take this a step further. They tried to figure out techniques where we could maybe use entangled photons to try to reconstruct things even faster or more precise. So in essence, taking digital holography to a completely new level. And here there's this really really good video explaining pretty much all of this by David Butler. 
he makes this incredible Classroom 8 with a YouTube video in the description basically showing us everything. And here this new technique is known as Ghost Imaging. In essence, it's really, really simple. You once again take a laser, you split the beam, creating entangled photons, and then you send one of the beams toward some kind of an invisible or difficult to see object you're trying to scan, whereas the other beam goes into separate direction where there's practically nothing. And the idea here is that there is a detector on the opposite side and the photons are supposed to arrive to this location at the same time. Now, if the two beams pass nothing, there's going to be no difference and they're going to produce no additional observations. But if the beam on the right passes through the object that you're trying to detect, it's going to become disentangled and it's actually going to produce a kind of an interference pattern that's then going to produce the ghost image we're trying to see. Now, this is ghost imaging. This is a very well-known technique and it's been used many, many times. But it's a relatively recent technique, so it's still being developed. Normally, to try to scan these objects, it does take quite a long time. As a matter of fact, some of the more complex three-dimensional objects could take days or even weeks of observations in order to produce the final image. Now, it usually still works, it just takes a really long time. In some sense, though, this is essentially a kind of a quantum tomography. It produces the image we're trying to observe by using quantum effects. And this is a really exciting technique. It's actually going to allow us to see many different things we previously could not see. And so a lot of scientists are trying to figure out how to make this better which is precisely what this new study was about. They were trying to improve the ghost imaging technique. It actually even says so right here in their abstract. Paving a new route toward efficient and accurate computational ghost imaging and high dimensional quantum information processing. And so the main achievement in this paper was basically creating this new technique for ghost imaging, a new method or a new setup that allows for exponentially faster ghost imaging requiring only minutes or sometimes even seconds instead of days. They explain how they did this in their paper, but in essence, that's pretty much it. They obviously show us some of the sample images they used, and then it just so happens that apart from other images they used, someone on the team decided to do something slightly different. Hey, wouldn't it be funny if one of the images was actually a yin and yang symbol? Ha ha ha, what could possibly go wrong? And so essentially, just like in David Butler's video where he shows us how it's possible to reconstruct a hypothetical lambda letter as a ghost image, or just like we saw right here, the reconstruction of the red blood cell using a slightly less complicated setup, what we're seeing right here is literally a reconstruction of a yin and yang symbol, but obviously using that quantum ghost imaging. In other words, let me just rephrase this. It doesn't mean that this is what quantum entanglement looks like. All this shows us is a reconstruction of a yin and yang symbol using quantum entanglement. So they took a picture of yin and yang, they put it in the machine, they started their laser, fired a bunch of photons, and those photons were then able to reconstruct the image using quantum entanglement principles that you see right here. So that ghost image was basically a representation of the original yin and yang, in essence proving that their technique seems to work and works really fast. But because of, I guess, some miscommunication or maybe someone misunderstanding what this paper was about, pretty much every press release I've read so far makes this sound like this is literally the image of quantum entanglement. As a matter of fact, someone even mentioned that somewhere on TikTok, we have quite a lot of different spiritualists telling us that this is exactly what the universe was telling us all along. Quantum entanglement, yin and yang, the black and white, the hot and cold. Okay, you get the point. That's not it though. That's totally not it. This doesn't show us anything that was supposed to look like this. The image, the original image, was yin and yang. All the scientists did here was reconstruct it using imaging. So yeah, hopefully I made this a little bit more clear, and hopefully you're no longer confused about this very unusual viral story that was practically everywhere for many days. It is nevertheless still important though, because it shows us that this technique definitely works, works really fast, and can definitely help us advance ghost imaging techniques, and even new techniques involving quantum computers. And so even though in some way this is just, I guess, quantum art, mostly showing us the visualization of the wave function, the result of the quantum entanglement, it is by no means the appearance of entanglement itself and just shows us interference patterns between two laser beams. It is, however, still a really important achievement because here the team found a way to potentially extremely quickly assess various entangled particles, specifically allowing us to suddenly read several properties about each particle, making this process really fast. And just to give you a little bit more physics here, normally in a much simpler setup, 
we're only reading one single property of the entangled particles, for example, their spin. But what if you actually wanted to read several at once? Polarization, spin, momentum, even the position. Now in this case, to read several properties, it requires a much more complex setup, and it actually takes much longer to reconstruct everything. Also increasing the number of potential errors. And so by using this technique known as biphoton digital holography, it might become possible to interpret the properties of various entangled photons extremely quickly, allowing us to reconstruct everything in the process. And so in a nutshell, it just opens up a lot of doorways for possibly a really efficient quantum computing technique, or once again possibly a way to reconstruct something really difficult to see very fast. Although I guess at the moment this is still a proof of concept, so we don't really know where all of this goes just yet. And so definitely a really exciting paper and a really exciting discovery, just not for the reasons announced in most of the press releases. The quantum entanglement is not yin and yang, and this is not a discovery of some cosmic secret that was hidden from us until now. So yeah, sorry. Anyway, on that note, we'll come back and talk more about this once there are more discoveries or something else exciting about quantum computers and quantum entanglement. And in the meanwhile, check out some of the previous videos in the description on similar topics. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and who actually wants to learn more about this kind of stuff. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. Oh man, I wish they picked something even more funny, like a Hello Kitty picture, or maybe the Eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings. Because if people are going to be assuming that this is quantum entanglement, an Eye of Sauron would be way more mind-blowing.